This is the Canon AE-1. It's a 35mm film camera that I picked up a couple months ago, and I love it. But I'll explain why later. First, I want to talk about how to use it. Okay, so you'll need to choose a film stock. My personal favorite right now is Ektar 100, because it has a really rich saturation and contrast. To load the film, pull up on the rewind lever and open the camera. The roll goes in on the left side, and you'll need to pull some film out and feed it through the slot on the right. Release the shutter and rack it once to make sure it catches. Close up the camera and advance the film a few more times to get the exposure counter to 1. Next, you'll need to set the camera's ISO, which you can find on the box. This is a measure of how sensitive the film is to light. The camera has a built-in meter to help you with the exposure based on the ISO. With the film loaded, it's time to go out and shoot. Of course, these old lenses don't have autofocus. They're manual. If you've never used a manual lens, it might seem intimidating at first, but it's not too tough to get used to. Just take some practice. First thing I like to do is set the shutter speed. Since it's bright and foggy, I'll keep it at 500. So when you look through the viewfinder, there's this little circle thing that helps you set the focus. If you hold the shutter halfway, the light meter will tell you what to set the aperture to. A feature that I've been having a lot of fun with is the self-timer. It'll give you around 10 seconds to step into the frame before it releases the shutter, but I've also used it for long exposures so I can get my hands off the camera. So why would I start shooting on film in the digital age? Personally, I think the grain... The punchy colors and the crisp highlights are just so charming. Digital photographers are editing their images to look as much like film as possible because it looks amazing, but I wanted to get that look without having to edit in Lightroom. It's fun to naturally get the film look for a change without having to recreate it. I also bought this camera as a creative challenge. I started taking photos in between video shoots to train my eye, but it's not uncommon for me to take dozens of pictures of one thing, then struggle to figure out which angle I like the most. I end up with this never-ending list of drafts, most of which never even get used. This camera has helped me to become more intentional with my photography. Since every exposure has an actual cost, it puts me into a mindset where I sit and think about what I want the image to look like before I capture it. I took a break from shooting with my digital camera for a few months, and when I went back to it, my images were so much better because I put more thought into them. It's made a huge difference for me. So when you get to the end of the roll, press the button on the bottom of the camera and spin the rewind lever until you feel it get to the end there will be a lot less resistance. Then it's time to box up your film and send it off to the lab for development. Film photography definitely takes a lot more time and money, but if you found yourself stuck creatively, I think this will help you a lot. If you'd like to see the photos I've been taking, I post albums on Medium every few weeks. I'll leave links in the description for my blog and all the gear I used in this video in case you want to check those out. But until next time, thanks for watching.